do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, Lord. All right. If you could state your name for the record, please. Amber Asher. All right. You can lower your hand. Defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Asher, good morning. Good morning. What is your relationship with Donnie? He's my oldest son. Jason. Jason. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Let's return now. I'm sorry. So he's your oldest son? That's correct. How many children do you have? Six. And what do you do for a living this afternoon? Uh, I deliver for Uber. Like, like Uber Eats? Which is, okay, thank you. Oh, and just, just for clarification for the record, um, we'll need a... Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So in the interview that Dominic provided to um, probation, he had mentioned that he was mostly raised from childhood by his aunt and uncle. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, can you explain to the court how he ended up in the custody of his aunt and uncle? Uh, due to domestic violence between his father him, and his younger brother were both removed from my custody. And my aunt legally adopted them. And just for the judges aware, was this uh, domestic violence? Were, were you uh, charged with domestic violence? Were you an aggressor in this in these situations? No, I was the big vote. Did you feel that because of that circumstances, um, you felt Dominic would have been safer uh, in the custody of your aunt and uncle? That's correct. After he was uh, put into the custody of your aunt and uncle, were, were you just no longer involved with his life? I've always been there. So you, you've played an active role in, in his um, up, upbringing? That's correct. Was Dominic's uh, biological father, was he ever in the picture for him? No. I think the last time Dominic saw him was like three. Three years old. So I'm sorry, I'm confused. So the person that she's saying was abusive to her, is that uh, the defendant's biological father? That's correct. Okay, all right. Sorry, sorry. No. Thank you. Could you please describe the judge, um, Dominic's character? Um, let's start, I guess, before this incident um, and any change or growth in his character that you've seen since he was arrested on this, on this uh, charge. Uh, I would have to say that before he was arrested on this charge, there was like tremendous maturity happening and he, I won't say made a mistake. He made some really bad choices in that time frame. Uh, my dad had just passed away like two months before that. And a lot, lot was going on with me and him and his younger brother. Um, his younger brother being Isaiah? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... They kind of just lost their way for a while there. My dad was Dominic's best friend, the one that he always talked to. And then he, didn't, he felt like the one person who was always there for him was gone. Since he was arrested for this charge, the, the aggravated robbery charge, um, how would how would you describe, I guess, the changes that he's made in his life, improvements, if any? He started to get his life on track as far as employment. and talked about school, getting his GED, and starting to care about where his life was going instead of just being this empty shell every day. What about any sort of changes in character since uh, learning that he was to become a father? 
he's very responsible. He's a great dad as far as I've seen so far. Uh, he, he does everything he can to try to help with the baby. As far as you're aware, um, would there be potential issues in terms of raising the child if Dominic is not involved? Financially, of course. And also, she needs her dad. Obviously, being his mother, knowing him since he from birth, <laughs> um, any history at all that Dominic had, you know, aggression or violence or you know, acting out in anger? Like, was he getting into a lot of fights in school? Anything like that? No. You had mentioned uh, your younger son, Isaiah. Thank you. He's, he was mentioned as well in Dominic's interviews. Um, Dominic admitted that Isaiah was uh, the shooter in this incident. As far as you're aware, is that correct? That is correct. Where is Isaiah now? Uh, he's TDT. Is it because of this incident that he is there? That's one of the incidents for the reason why he's there. He had numerous charges. I know it's tough as a mother to, to talk about uh, your children in, in this life, but would you describe Isaiah as being more of a, uh, a troubled or violent individual compared to Dominic? He's definitely more of a fly off the handle than Dominic. Dominic more level-headed than Isaiah's more rowdy. I don't know how else to explain him. Like, Could you please explain to the judge why you believe that Dominic is deserving of a chance on deferred adjudication rather than going to prison? I think that's that that's it right there. It's just a chance. He just needs a chance to not become a statistic of his he made a horrible choice and he knows that when we just ask for mercy, that's all. He has to be accountable for his actions and we understand that. Is there anything else that you would like to inform the judge? Anything you feel is important for her to know about Donald? I just know that his heart's in the right place and his mind's in the right place and he just means he he wants to do things right and be a good a good productive member of society, a good man, a good a father, and a, a good, you know, fiance to his, his, his girl. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Uh, pass away to Chairman. All right, state. Yes, you but are you aware that your son is also accused of uh, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and theft of that motor vehicle on June 23rd, 2021? That's correct. Just one second. Excuse me, lady in the shirt. Who are you? No, who are you? Are you here? You're a friend? Well, friend, this is not visitation and you're talking to inmates in the box. And let me tell you what the problem with that is. The problem with that, oh, don't give me attitude. The problem with that is the fact that the officers are in charge of security and you're messing with security. So friend of the friend of the person in the box, step outside the courtroom. And the friend in the box, this is not visitation. You need to do that at the jail. No. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, I am aware that he had those other two charges. Um, one of the charges actually, uh, the, the vehicle in question was actually stolen by my other son. So I guess since you brought it up, your other son, so two of your sons, one being the oldest, and then Isaiah is the next one. Is that correct? That's correct. So both of them are out car hopping. You know what that means? Yes. What does that mean? They're basically going from car to car, getting whatever they can out of it. Were they living with you at this time? No. Well, you, you stated that he didn't, didn't uh, the defendant in this case, your son, didn't he come to live with you when he was 17 or 18? When he turned 18, he did. 
Okay, so how old was he when he was committing any felonies? Because he has to be 18 or older. So he was staying with you when he was 18. I'm sorry, so stay just one second. Excuse me. I don't approach the court coordinator while we're on the record because there's chatter over here. There's chatter in the box. It's making di it difficult for me to hear on this very important case, which all the cases are important, and it's making it difficult for the court reporter can, to hear. All right, so you may continue. So you're aware that, I mean, when he was committing theft of vehicle or unauthorized use of motor vehicle, he was staying with you, is that right? At first, he did go back and forth. It wasn't like one day he brought all his stuff and moved in. It, it was, he, he came, he stayed the weekend, and then it was, you know, it kind of just solidified into like a permanent thing. Isaiah ended up going back to my aunt because he didn't have a choice. So to be fair, I mean, your sons and your children are moving from your house to somebody else's house. You don't know exactly where they are, do you? I don't agree with that. Okay, so you know where they're at at all times? For the most part. So on December 25th, going into December 26th, when this aggravated robbery where their shooting happened, you knew where they were on Christmas night? I didn't know where they were at that time, no. Okay. So now do you agree with me that you don't know where they're at at all times? Well, I don't think anybody knows where their children are at all times when they're at that age. On Christmas night? Well, I do have four other kids at home, so yeah. I mean, this, this one child of yours that's over the age of 18 staying with you, and then you also had a juvenile son that was charged with this aggravated robbery that went to TYC for this actual ag robbery. So correct. you didn't know where your juvenile son was that night when he was committing ag robbery. Is yeah. that correct? I mean, I guess that's correct. But like okay. I said, my Thank aunt you. has custody of Isaiah and had custody of him at that time. Okay. And actually, your son in this particular case is actually says that he would he's going to return to the aunt uncle's residence and stay there with his girlfriend with their, I believe, a young child, the nine month old. Is that right? Yes, that's and, right. And not with you. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Any other questions? Some follow up, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, how old is Dominic uh, today? 20. 20 years old. So at the time that this occurred, roughly around 18 years old. Does that sound right or is that incorrect? That's correct. Uh, were at at that time were you keeping tabs on him at all times, or was he of the age where he would was? Let me well let me let me rephrase it and say at eighteen is he an adult? Yes, at eighteen. I'm sorry. Uh, just to rephrase, at that age of eighteen, is he considered an adult? Yes. No further questions. All right. Any other questions? No questions. Yeah. I just have a few questions. If there's no objection. No, no objection. Stay All right. So were your parental rights terminated? No, I actually re relinquished my rights. Um, it was ongoing CPS case. And I, they basically told me I had ran out of time. I they had already given me an extension. So that means that there was a legal case. Am I correct? Yes. And as a part of that legal, legal case, there were certain things you had to complete. Before I relinquished my rights? That's no, correct. there were certain things that you had to complete because they were giving you a chance to have your children in your custody, correct? That's correct. So what did you not complete? Um, I actually didn't complete. Well, I didn't maintain my sobriety at that time. Okay. Um, so I went into inpatient. All right. Thank you so much for coming in and giving me some insight into your son. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Call your next witness. The best would not call Dominic. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. Make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. Yes, ma'am. All right, state your name for the record. Dominic. All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Dominic, do you understand why we're here today? I do understand. Do you understand that uh, you are facing the potential possibility if the judge follows this agreement uh, for a maximum of eight years in prison? I do understand. What are you asking uh, of the judge today? Your Honor, um, I really just want to ask for forgiveness. Um, if I had the chance to speak to the victim and let him know how sorry I am and how like bad I feel for the incident and what went down that night, I, I wish I could come up with the words to apologize to him. I, I really don't 
think that there's enough words or or things that I can say to him that is going to make it better. I was traumatized that day. I was also shot. And I just can't imagine how traumatized that his family and he is. And if I had the opportunity to apologize, I would do so. I don't think that that would take it away or make things better. But if I had the opportunity to go back in time and fix things and not do them the way that I did them, I would. Um, I really am just praying and asking that you give me a chance, Your Honor. Um, I make some very bad choices and I'm trying to turn that around. Um, I didn't have a father figure to, to tell me like the right from wrong. So I learned the hard way. And this is one of those many times that I'm learning the hard way. I just please ask you that you give me a little bit of leniency and push for the probation instead of prison time. So that way I can be there around my daughter while she grows up and she doesn't have to grow up without a father like I did. The same thing as my fiance. She grew up without her father and I, I don't want that for my baby girl. Um, I was also molested as a kid. Um, and I don't want that for my daughter. I don't want her to not have her parents around to watch her, to know that she's okay 25 eight. I, I, I don't want her to make the wrong choices that I did. And I don't want her to have to grow up without a father figure. I am extremely sorry for my actions and my part in the incident, but I really do not believe that I deserve time because I, w I didn't play the part in shooting the gun and I take full responsibility for my actions. I was there and I made that decision to do so. I just hope that the, the, the victim can find some type of forgiveness for me. And I hope that you can understand that um, I really was just a broken soul at that time. And I'm really trying to turn myself around now, ma'am. I really am. And I'm doing everything I can to do so. I'm working, I'm providing for my baby girl. I'm, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. I haven't had any violations on my monitor. I've gone to and, work, to and from work, done what I was supposed to do. And I will do more to prove that I am capable of succeeding and growing and becoming a better man as time goes by. I'll, I'll do any type of counseling, any type of anger management problems, uh, anything. Um, I, I want to do whatever it is that I can to, to rehabilitate myself and, and better myself as a man, as, as a father, as a son, as an individual. Like, I just, I really hope that you can forgive me, Your Honor, I and mean, that you understand that. I'm, I'm not a criminal. I just made some very wrong choices and I'm doing my best to fix them and turn around. So, Dominic, you had mentioned uh, about for, uh, forgiveness. And so just you know, to be clear, you're, are you asking the judge for a chance on for adjudication? Yes, Your Honor, that's exactly what I'm asking. Uh, you had also mentioned to the judge, um, you know, willingness to do whatever she orders. But let me ask you this. Do you personally believe that you are in need of counseling and classes, parenting classes, uh, yes. self-help classes? And do you feel I, that's I, what you need internally? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I'm always trying to better myself. And at this point in time, like right now, I'm, I'm focused on that 100 percent. Like that's my main goal is to to better myself as a as a human being. Um, I made some very bad choices and I'm not trying to go back down that road that I went down. I, I had dealt with the loss of my grandpa and he was the closest thing to a father figure I had. What sort of uh, goals do you have? Like, Do you have a career path? Um, um, any sort of plans that you have for your future? Honestly, if you would have asked me 10 years ago or 15 years ago what I wanted to be when I grow up, I would have said that I wanted to be a dad and I, I've gotten that wish come true. Um, I just really hope that I can spend that time with my daughter and not have to be taken away from her. What plans do you have in place to be a better father uh, to your daughter? Um, I plan to be around and provide um, to love her unconditionally uh, on a level that I, I, I never was shown. Um, 
I just want to be there for her. That I, I think that that's the most important thing mentally is, is she needs that support. She needs me around. And if she doesn't have me around, I, I think that she's just going to be a loose end. I'll pass it. All right, State. Yes, uh, you stated you're not a criminal. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yes. How many cars have you burglarized? I don't know. I don't know, sir. I mean, too many to count. Yes, sir. Okay, because it's called car hopping, where you would go around a neighborhood or an apartment complex and check doors to see if they're unlocked and then burglarize the vehicle. Yes, sir. And that's a criminal, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So you don't know how many cars that you've done. The night that this happened on Christmas night, going into Christmas, the day after Christmas, your brother had a gun with him. Yes. And you knew he had a gun with him. No, I did not. You didn't. I had no idea he had it with him. So the two of y'all are burglarizing vehicles and your brother has a gun and you don't know he has a gun and your brother used that gun on the victim in this case and then also including you. He shot you also in that, that act. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So after it happened, what did y'all do? Um, well, after the whole incident, uh, I had went straight home and I rinsed my arm off. That's what I did and I wrapped it up. What did y'all do for the victim? Um... Nothing. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. No further questions, John. All right. May I ask a question or do you have more questions? I have no further questions, John. All right. So there's this vehicle and there are Christmas gifts in the vehicle. And I've read the uh, stipulations. I always reread those and I read the PSI report. So these people were taking Christmas gifts out of their car because it's Christmas time. They leave their door open as people sometimes do because they're trying to load the Christmas gifts in, probably preparing Christmas for their children uh, because Santa Claus is real. So trying to make sure that they know that Santa Claus was able to stop by the house and you and your brother decide to take their Christmas gifts. Did you, were you able to take some of their Christmas gifts? Uh, Your Honor, I don't believe that I grabbed anything out of the car. Well, you and your brother, because you and your brother were doing this together. Were you able to take some of their Christmas gifts? I well, I mean, not believe so. You know if there were packages wrapped in your vehicle or not. Well, it was a pretty traumatizing experience, like, experience for me. Like my brother had just shot me and I went to like. Well, I mean, them. your brother shot you by accident. He was trying to shoot the complainant, correct? Yes, Your Honor. So. You took some of their Christmas gifts. I would like to know when you went back home to wash the blood off your arm, yes, sir. what happened to their Christmas gifts? I, I don't know because I didn't go that far. My brother dropped me off at the house and he did what he did with the rest of the stuff. And what did your uncle ask you? Because I see your uncle was trying to help you with the gunshot wound yes, to your sir. arm. What did your uncle do? Um, I had told him that my brother had shot me and that's when he would that in hydrogen peroxide, we just cleaned it and I wrapped it up. Did anybody search for a bullet? Was this like Rambo where somebody has some, you know, gunpowder and they put it in the wound and light it? What mm -hmm. What did he do? Rambo where somebody has some, you know, gunpowder and they put it in the wound and light it? What mm -hmm. What did he do? Rambo where somebody has some, you know, gunpowder and they put it in the wound and light it? What? Oh. A visual. It's, it's right here. Okay. Uh, that's the one I came out right here. Oh, so he knew that there was an exit one? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. There, well, there was one hole right here and one right here. So I and what did your yeah. brother say to you when you told him he had shot you? Did he say you're on your own? Like, it wasn't really like that. It was more like, like he didn't know what to do. <laughs> was it like a scene out of the movie where you see in a movie where somebody gets shot and they just say, we got to help him. And then they just drop him off at the hospital door and keep going. Or did he just drop you off at your uncle's house? I just got dropped off and cleaned it. And then that's when I was taken to my mom's from there. All right. You know, then that day you ruined somebody's Christmas. I understand. And you understand that the complainant was shot. Yes, sir. And they didn't go to their uncle's house. They had to go to the hospital. I understand. All right. Any other questions? No, sir. All right. No, sir. Any, any other witnesses? No further witness. All right, the court will hear argument. State? State's asking for eight years in TDC, Your Honor. All right, defense. Your Honor, uh, defense will be asking the court uh, for, to take into consideration all that has been presented today. 
uh, and give Mr. Briefly a chance uh, on deferred adjudication. He, you've heard his history, uh, his, his coming up, he's mentioned that he didn't have a really good, I guess, father figure in his life. He had his mother that was there to help raise him, even though she had really- Just one second. I'm sorry. You probably may need to start breathing through your mouth because I see you're hyperventilating. I, I have an anxiety disorder. Okay. Sorry. So you probably want to take some deep breaths. Yeah, but the she's one owner. Sure. I'm not sure who's cooled off. Whenever. All right, so I hear you. We, we've heard uh, the story of, of his upbringing. You know, even though his his mother uh, relinquished her rights, she tried her best to stay in his life as much as possible. Uh, but he's admitted to the court that he felt that he just didn't have uh, the right tools mm -hmm. in his upbringing to to help him. You know, he's gone through some very traumatic experiences in his life, being molested, and he admitted uh, to that that to the probation officer. I will admit to the court that that was the first time I heard that information as well. It was news to me. Um, he expressed in, in that report that the bad uh, incident had a huge impact on his life. It, it led him down a, a spiral of depression, anxiety, he kind of closed himself off. Um, and that led to some, as he, as he described, some very bad choices. Um, breaking into vehicles uh, seemed to be what his... Main outlet, his main outlet was, um, but I think it's very clear from the testimony and, and from the admissions that he made to the officers uh, and what he's explained to the court that Mr. Brinkley himself, he's not a violent person. He's not a, a uh, the type of person to go out with a gun and looking to harm anybody. I think he, I don't want to say wrong place, wrong time, because that's not the right word here. It's just, he made a bad choice. And he happened to be put into the situation where his brother uh, escalated things to the point where nobody wants to see. And I know that Mr. Brinkley is extremely sorry about what happened. And like he said, there's no way that he can ever express how sorry he is or ever take it back or ever make it better. Um, the person who was responsible for the actual harm is sitting right now in TDC custody. All right. we're, just ask, we're, we're just asking for the court to take into consideration Mr. Brinkley's role in this. He is willing to take responsibility. He understands his role in it as well. Uh, just give him a chance to for adjudication, 10 years if, if the court feels necessary. Uh, he hasn't had an opportunity to uh, be guided in the right path. You know, he's he's begging the court for counseling. He, he's he's uh, reaching out for a hand, uh, asking for help. He's got this newborn child. Uh, parenting classes are, are obviously needed. Uh, moral recognition therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. I mean, anything that can be available to Mr. Brinkley. All right, here, here's my goes, question, though. Yes, Why would somebody who has an aggravated robbery pending decide to get with someone and have a child until they know what's happening with this? It's all about the choices, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, those those are just questions because this this aggravated robbery date on it is 2021. So it's not like he had the baby beforehand because they've just told me the baby is months old. So why would people do that, knowing that this is there and then come to the court and say, my my child is going to need a father? Say something, please, Your Honor. Oh, sure. Um, I chose to have my daughter because. That was one of the many goals that I wanted to accomplish in life. and To have a I, child. Well, I, I wanted to be a father. because While you have an aggravated robbery pending. Ma'am, I wasn't thinking about that. When I got the charge, I, I didn't get the charge. I got it when I got arrested late in November and my girl was pregnant in August. Mm -hmm. So I, I honestly wasn't I mean, like, but you had to have known that this was coming down the pipeline because I did, and I, that's you've I, been shot and the complainant's been shot. Yes, so no. you decided to get into a relationship and to have a child. Did you tell her about this aggravated robbery that was pending before you all decided to be in a relationship or did you drop it on her after you were in a relationship? She, she had known about it when I had told her about my gunshot wound to my heart. Oh, so before you all got into a relationship? No, it was after our relationship. We had gotten into a relationship after the incident. See, here's the thing. I don't know why people in, uh, continue to let people meet their publicists instead of their true selves, because the right way to do things 
you should have sat down with her and say, I would love to be in a relationship with you. Let me tell you what's going on in my life. I have a pending aggravated robbery because maybe she would have said, you know what? I want to be in a relationship with you, but we shouldn't have children at this point in time because we don't know what's going to happen with your case. Instead, you all go out and decide to have a relationship, have a child that's months old, then come to the court and use the child for the court as judge. I want to be a father to my child. I don't want my child not to have a father. And then bringing an infant down here who's that age, as I said, to a nasty courtroom. This courtroom is filled with germs. The only other place that's probably has more germ is the jail in the hospital. My grandmother would always say, when you go to the hospital, you need to get out as quickly as possible because it's filled with germs. And no matter how they try to clean it, it's true. So then you want to bring a baby here for me to see. Oh, cute little baby. Don't take its father away. Your Honor, honestly, we didn't have somebody to watch her. The person who left was our ride here. And that I hope that wasn't a complete stranger you all had watching the baby. Oh, yeah. I hope it's somebody you can trust. Yes, I hope it's somebody you all did a background check on. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. With regards to the amount that's owed to the complainant in this case, I see an amount that was paid to victims of crime compensation fund of $24,000. And I'm assuming that's the amount that was due to the complainant. Your Honor, I, I did see that uh, the complainant didn't respond to the PSI report. Uh, so the state would say that that's the portion that's owed back to the victim's okay. compensation. Um, All right. So I, uh, oh, I'm sorry, counsel, you may continue. I actually don't remember where I left off, Your Honor. Uh, well, I guess. Um, you were telling me about his history and that you learned about um, his physical abuse yes. that happened to him as he told told yes. the court today. And, and, and just knowing that the, the impact that that had on his life and the spiral that that, that drew him down. Um, oh, I don't know. And so um, he was reaching out, he's reaching out to the court, Your Honor, for, um, for a chance not only to stay out of prison, but to be a better person. He wants to learn these things. He wants to go to counseling. He wants to be a better person. And I think that that, uh, in terms of from other people that I've seen come through uh, this criminal justice system, I think that is is a big improvement in in terms of you know, others that and just to show to the court that he's not here to play around. He's not here to uh, just simply ask for a chance. He he is begging for that chance and asking for an opportunity to be a better person and be a better father um, and to make things right as best as you can. All right. Uh, State? All right. Mr. Brinkley, I want to let you know that I listened to everything. I've internalized everything. I listened to your mother. I know you had a bad upbringing. I know that your mother did not complete her service plan. That's why her rights were terminated or that's right. The reason she decided to relinquish because I know in CPS cases, you have up to a year to get your life in order. They give you a year where you actually have a free babysitter. And all you have to do is do your parenting class to stay clean and sober. I'm sure she had a choice to make because I would tell my clients all the time over there, either you want your man or you want your children. Who do you choose? And they would always tell me, oh, no, I want my children. Next thing you know, what ends up happening? They're back with the man. And their children have to go wherever they go because they term they get their rights terminated. So I understand. I understand your upbringing was bad. I understand that you have a baby that you want to be there for, right? Yes, sir. But I have to balance things and look at both things. Nothing really stopped you from your criminal activities because you said you were car hopping. And I appreciate the fact that you're being 100% honest with the court. Um, sentencing is about one of the things it's for rehabilitation, right? But it's also for punishment. Even when I place people on a probation, yes, I want them to get rehabilitated, but it's also for punishment. And in your case, if I send you to prison, it's punishment and rehabilitation. This case, um, is going to be a prison case. I know that you are young, but, um, you will still have time 
to live your life. I'm going to find you guilty, sentence you to eight years in the prison. There's credit for any time served, $1,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent, concurrent taking in consideration 2022 CR 5308. 2023 CR 0224. There's to be no contact with uh, Martin Hernandez. Affirmative finding of deadly weapon. There's to be restitution to the victim of crime compensation fund in the amount of $24,630.40. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Sure. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. You're young. Yes, I know this seems like a lot of time, and any time behind bars is a lot of time. But make use of your time. Don't become institutionalized. Learn. You'll still be able to get out of prison and be in your child's life. You understand? I do. All right. Good luck to you.